Hello, I'm Kevin Fernando, a GP based near Edinburgh in Scotland. You're watching this video because you've been started on thinking about starting on an SGLT2 inhibitor medication. In this video, I will outline some of the more common side effects people experience with SGLT2 inhibitors and some practical advice on how to manage these side effects. All drugs have side effects, but the advantages of SGLT2 inhibitors outweigh these side effects for the majority of people who would benefit from them. And this is backed up by a large number of clinical studies and also my own experience of prescribing SGLT2 inhibitors over the last 10 years. Many people, especially those without type 2 diabetes, will actually not notice any daily difference in their lives. Now, the commonest side effect you are likely to have with an SGLT2 inhibitor are mild fungal infections, also known as thrush, affecting the groin or genital areas. You might notice some itching or redness or a white discharge in these areas. This is due to the increased sugar in the urine caused by SGLT2 inhibitors. So good personal hygiene is very important, particularly after passing urine to prevent thrush developing. So washing your groin and genital areas with non-perfumed soap or a soap substitute and warm water, and also wearing loose fitting cotton underwear can also help. If your symptoms do happen to persist, do contact your healthcare professional, your doctor, nurse or pharmacist. These thrush infections are easily treatable with simple creams and reassuringly tend not to come back. Now, some people taking SGLT2 inhibitors do pass urine more frequently. On average, studies suggest people will pass urine one extra time per day compared to usual. This often settles with time, but because you are passing more urine, it is a good idea to drink plenty fluids to prevent dehydration, especially in warmer weather. This generally isn't a problem for my patients in Scotland. Seriously though, I usually advise my patients taking SGLT2 inhibitors to drink two to two and a half liters of clear fluids daily, not including tea, coffee, or alcohol. However, if you have a background of heart failure or kidney failure, you should check with your healthcare professional about how much fluid you should drink daily. Low blood sugar levels, sometimes called hypos, can also occur in people living with type 2 diabetes taking SGLT2 inhibitors, particularly those on insulin or certain other medications, including glycoside, glipizide, and glimepiride. Your healthcare professional may reduce the dose of these other medications to prevent a hypo happening. However, if you are on insulin, you should never stop this altogether. A hypo is actually very rare in people without type 2 diabetes taking an SGLT2 inhibitor. Finally, SGLT2 inhibitors can sometimes cause lightheadedness due to a small drop in your blood pressure. Again, keeping your fluid levels up can help prevent this, but sometimes your healthcare professional might adjust the doses of some of your other medications, blood pressure medications if you have high blood pressure, or water tablets if you have prescribed them. And everyone taking an SGLT2 inhibitor should have their blood pressure checked at least once a year. In the next video, I will outline some key guidance on what to do with your SGLT2 inhibitor if you become unwell. I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for listening.